name is Tamara Chambers, and this is Tamara's Never Seen, and the start of Christmas, or whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate, December. Today, I am watching a movie that a lot of people consider to be their favorite Christmas film, or like a Christmas classic. I know it's Disney, I know it's Tim Allen, I think, it just always looked super cheesy to me and also something that's just been done a bunch of times and also I just don't watch movies. I'm trying to make all these excuses for why I haven't seen it. Hi, I'm Tamara, that's why. But I'm dressed up as Judy, I think her name is. She's an elf. I'm not even dressed up as her. I just wanted an excuse to wear these ears. This was made three years after I was born, 1994 and... <laughs> That's all I really know. Let's do it. If you like this movie, you're gonna love the end half of this reaction. If you don't like this movie, you're gonna love the beginning half of this reaction. I started off really hating this movie, and then halfway through did a complete 180 and started to genuinely enjoy this movie. The movie opens and Tim Allen is at this work Christmas party and he funly and lightheartedly makes this joke about how his coworker is casually cheating on his significant other. <laughs> Huh? I don't know that Tim Allen has ever actually made me laugh. He's just so sitcom -y to me, and that was like a very big problem when this movie came out. Everyone was like, is he gonna hold up to this like feature length Disney film? He's just a sitcom actor. A lot of people think he do does do's. I don't. <laughs> Especially in this first part, I don't find him fun at all. Or funny. I don't know that the movie's trying super hard to be funny, but if they are. <laughs> I love him as Buzz Lightyear. Everything else, it's like, ah, let's take it to leave it. Tim comes home on Christmas Eve and finds his ex-wife and son there so that the son can spend Christmas Eve with him. It's very classic 90s, like, divorced parents dynamic. Your boyfriend Neil is ugly. Oh yeah, well you're irresponsible and you're never here. Why do you guys always have to fight? Then the next scene is them going to Denny's on Christmas Eve because they've ruined the dinner. It's so sad. They go in and the front room is filled with a bunch of Asian people. Did you know? <laughs> Christmas? I don't know. The back room is filled with a bunch of single dads and their children. And it's really, really, really sad. Like, effectively very sad. Like, when a twin dies. With the music of a dad. At Denny's, his son Charlie asks for chocolate milk. And the waiter says that they're all out. At Denny's, his son Charlie asks for chocolate milk. And the waiter says that they're out. And in the most dejected, sad voice, Charlie just goes, regular sponge. Okay, this kid has two well-off parents that love him and provide for him. He's a psychiatrist as a stepfather who probably helps him a ton, but somebody help this kid. He's just a kid and his life is a nightmare. Throughout the Denny scene, which I will admit was a very well-written, very effective scene, he seemed to be trying to do his best. I felt bad for him. Felt bad for Tim. You're a single dad. You're bound to end up in a situation like this at some point. Any single parent is. And you want to, you know, this, they're doing their best. But then the, the next scene, he's not doing his best. He's reading Charlie a Christmas story and skipping half, and then Charlie asks a question about it and he rolls his eyes at Charlie. Oh my God, it's Christmas Eve, you nasty slut. Charlie's asking a bunch of questions. He's not giving him any answers. He's like, how did the reindeer fly? Mm, Red Bull. Actually, no. Red Bull doesn't give you wings. That wasn't a question. <laughs> then Charlie hears Santa on the roof and runs into his father's room. And this happens. That was intentional. <laughs> that was an intentional pose. He's like, I'm gonna be in a fat suit for the rest of this movie. I'm gonna look sexy for f once. Sexy bed pegs. Sexy bed pegs. Sexy bed poses, <laughs> not just for ladies. Then he runs outside and scares Santa off of his roof, killing him. <laughs> it just doesn't like wound him. 
doesn't talk him into retirement. He kills Santa. I guess I didn't know that going into this. Santa falls, and as he's gliding off of the roof, the snow like comes with him in a sheet because they're filming this in LA, I think. All of the snow is super fake. Especially now that I live in Chicago where there's real snow from California. I know the difference, you guys. <laughs> I know the difference between actual frozen water and plastic, <laughs> okay? Just don't think that I don't. I do. I'm just a kid and my life is a nightmare. Then a reindeer farts. <laughs> Tim is the worst throughout all of this. He's grumbling about it. He's like, this is stupid. And his son is like, why do you think everything I want to do is stupid? And he's like, fine, fine, no, I didn't mean that. We'll do it, we'll do it. And he's like grumbling as he's putting on this outfit. A kid sees him in the first house he goes into and asks why his clothes are so baggy. And Santa really sassily goes, Santa's watching his saturated fat. So they finish delivering presents to every child in the entire world. Okay. And a small child greets them in the North Pole. <laughs> Thank you, creepy small child. Thank you. Still wasn't really getting it, because <laughs> again, hadn't seen it. Okay, so he's the new Santa, cool. <laughs> Remember when I said that I know the difference between snow and plastic earlier? That's about it, that's all I, that's all I got rolling around up here. <laughs> so he's in the Santa workshop, and he picks up a tool belt, and he puts it up to him like he's gonna put it on, and he's like, Nah, and puts it away. <laughs> what a fun call to his show. Do you get it? Because he's, it's just, if you don't get it, just too smart for the room. Such a blast. So he's turning into Santa, great. And he obviously has to improve from being this likable jerk to this likable hero of Santa. And it's, it's, it's like Scrooge, which I loved. I didn't love this film. I didn't think it was fun enough to warrant the lead character being such a jerk. I loved Scrooge. Cue the thumbs downing of this video. No, it was already there. Yeah, it's already there. I have to get over my personal dislike of terrible people characters, so I'm giving it a chance. He wakes up back in his bed. Charlie still remembers everything. He thinks it's a dream. They spend the next four scenes trying to convince Charlie that it didn't actually happen, that Charlie's a crazy kid and then he starts gaining weight and his hair turns white and he's like oh okay maybe I'm just... I had so much more fun with Tim Allen as a bigger man <laughs> he was funnier <laughs> he was way more likable and I guess that's just the Santa Claus effect you know and this is crazy guys this is gonna sound nuts I don't like unlikable care I don't like unlikable characters I it's crazy I know his co-workers though are dicks he shows up to work, he only has sweats that fit him, and they're like, wow, what happened? Your weight! I, f shut up, I f***ed your mom. That's what, and then she, <laughs> I'm saying a lot in this episode. <laughs> Christmas! <laughs> then Tim goes to the doctor to see what's wrong. He still doesn't really think he's Santa. And he says, I've gained 45 pounds in a week. So the mom and the boyfriend, Neil, try to take Charlie from his father because they only see this kid who says that his dad is Santa Claus and then they see the dad turning into Santa Claus thinking that he's manipulating this kid to the most extreme. And that's pretty terrifying to think like if he wasn't Santa Claus and he was just like gaining all this weight and dyeing his hair white and growing a beard, that's nuts. And then the dad realizes his full potential as Santa and then he steals Charlie for this epic Christmas adventure. And the mom walks out and the worst line read I've maybe ever heard goes, Charlie! Charlie and dad go out again. It's way better than last year and Ike agrees. He agrees. Oh, he's so much nicer than last year. Oh, I love this. I feel so Christmassy now actual things that I wrote. Santa gets arrested for kidnapping and then breaking and entering, and then elves save him, obviously. This is Christmas, bitches. You think that terribly CGI'd elves aren't gonna fly through the air and save Santa from prison? Get some respect on those lips. Okay, so Santa's saved, then they return Charlie to the mom, and Santa's like, you know, you gotta save your mom now, I'm gonna go finish the gifts now. And, and then, Charlie says, I love you, Santa. And he's saying that to his father and to Santa at the same time. Listen, every kid's dream. And I said, oh shit, I'm crying at the Santa Claus movie. How did it come to this? 
Then the mom and Neil get the gifts that they never got as children and Santa gives it to them. And I'm like, okay, Tim, I see you now. I see you. Didn't see you in the beginning of the movie, but I see you. That was some jolly ass shit, guys. Damn. I don't know if it's the unlikable character trait that just feels very like 80s to me. This was made in the early 90s, but it felt so low. Like he wasn't written well, I don't think, in the beginning. I'm not saying this is a brilliant script in the end half either, but it's at least enjoyable to watch this man turn into Santa Claus versus. <laughs> versus this man just be a dick to his kid and like begrudgingly deliver gifts to, you know, it just, it wasn't enjoyable, and it was enjoyable, and it was cheesy as hell, and I liked it. it. made me cry. I think that all Christmas movies should make you cry a little bit at the end. You know what I mean? Next week, I'm watching Eight Crazy Nights. Can't wait to cry that one. Bye! Oh, I'm just a cat, and my life is a nightmare. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay.